Tell you what, I'm glad I got the big box of screws. Hello YouTube, welcome back to Scott Rails and Dave. On the last video, I built this entire bench work for my HO scale layout in my basement. The next step, I want to install some baseboard, cut that to shape, but I also want to install the backdrop. We do have a bit of a chicken or the egg situation. Let me explain. This is hardwood cut to two feet because it comes in four by eights. So the most economic way to do it is to cut it in two foot strips. And that's going to get attached, obviously, to the back of the layout. Roughly there. Again, I can't attach it to the walls, so I'm going to use some lengths of four foot studs. So two foot, two foot will get attached to the back of the, the bench and two foot will stick up, but it's not going to be exactly two feet because obviously I need to add the baseboard and then I'm going to be adding an inch of foam. So I need to measure two foot and then go back up or down one inch and a quarter inch. I need to measure the, the, the plywood thickness and then I have to attach it to the back. So obviously the way it is now, I've got a lot of access to underneath because this is going to get attached like that far down. But then how do I know where to put these? Because I don't know how long the backdrop is going to be because I'm going to have it curving around that corner. So what I'm going to do, there's only going to be one join between the backdrop sections. The other sections I'm not going to be drilling through. I'm going to do some double sided Velcro tape on each of these studs. So I won't have to do the, the mudding thing with all the screws. There will just be one join there, one join there, one join there. I think it's going to take about four strips. So about three joins, so it's not too bad. I don't know what I'm doing, if I'm going to do a picture background or paint it or whatever. Let's just concentrate on getting the structure complete and then we can worry about how good it looks. So I think I'm going to mount all of these first, bend some backdrop to get the right shape because obviously it's, it's kind of hard to measure a curve unless you're good at trigonometry, I think, if that's the right math to use. I'm just going to do it by sight. So let me finish off all these installations and then we'll try some backdrop. If my calculations are correct, and they always are, the first sheet of backdrop will start on this post, curve round, and meet in the middle of that post there. But before I try that, I'm actually going to put the baseboard on. I can still move these about. I can get access from underneath. It's not as easy, but I can do it. So let's start with the baseboard.
a little bit warped. It was cheap, it was sitting outside when I bought it. I wonder if I should put some weight on it just to settle it down, leave it for a bit. Probably should, right? Yeah, I'll do that. That should do it. What I can do just now is start marking off where I'm going to cut it and cut it. Actually, I'm going to screw down at least this edge of the board and then if there's any levelling out to do, it can go that way, it's fine. But uh, give me a second, I'll get this screwed down and we can mark and then cut. Front edge is all screwed down, time to mark it all and cut it out. Now, I have to keep this first section quite wide because that's where it's going to do the loop round, but it can come in here and stay around about three feet. But I need more than three feet if I want two tracks going round. Let's we'll see what happens. So despite my best efforts to completely muck up my plan, it actually turned out pretty good. We've got this starting area, which is 40, almost 44 inches. Well, let's face it, it's going to be 42 usable. So even if I have a 20 inch radius curve going round the outside, round the outside, round the outside, and maybe an 18 on the inside. I can easily have two curves looping back, coming around here, going in here. And remember, the reason I've got this deeper in is just so that I can reach all the way to the back. It's going to be a wee bit trickier there, but as I say, the backdrop is going to be curving around there. So yeah, it's a bit of a reach, but I needed, I needed that distance for my loop. Similar around here, I've got plenty of room for Bear in mind, if there's going to be two sets of looping tracks, that's four tracks. So one, two at the back, two here. 
all the way along here, similar. It's going to be pretty much the same at the moment because I've not actually designed my track layout. That's going to be the fun part. But happy with this so far. Now, I wanted to get the backdrop done, or at least started today. However, I don't have any of the Velcro strips that I wanted, and I kind of need them to secure it while it's moulding itself to the shape. I'm, I'm going to leave the whole backdrop thing for a different video because I've been watching on YouTube how other people are doing it. It involves windowing, strangely enough. So as I say, that'll be a separate video. For now, I want to just make sure everything's level. I'm going to leave this board overnight with some weight on it, make sure it's nice and flat. Probably add some more screws, maybe go around all the edge with some sandpaper, just so it didn't get scales in my soft hands. And then we'll get back at it in a few days. Talking of which, it's my birthday in two days, and just by chance, there's a big train show down in Woodstock. So my wife has offered to take me there for my birthday and spend lots of money. Well, hopefully, hopefully it's lots of money. So, uh, not desperate for trains at the moment. I've got plenty of DC trains, but I do need some track. I want to get some flex track. It's the easiest way to do these big curves on the outside, so I don't have to buy lots of sections of 20, 20 radius curve things. So that's the plan for the weekend. Train show, spend money, get back at this on Monday. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see where this is going. And one final thing, leave a comment if you think white foam is okay over pink foam. I'm going to be using a hot wire cutter to mould shapes into the foam, so it doesn't really matter if it's white or pink. Pink is definitely better, but it's also way more expensive than a white foam. And I'm a cheap Scotsman, as you know. Take care, everyone. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.